And today we talk about the first season of Game of Thrones. We're leading up to the start of the seventh season, which is this Sunday. And so we're going to recap and review a little bit of season one. One of the things that I really enjoyed was the fact that they used Ned Stark as a surrogate for the audience. Most of the action runs through him or is seen through his eyes. Obviously, um, the Daenerys stuff is separate from Westeros, and occasionally you're getting point of view things from Tyrion um, and Rob and Catelyn, but really everything kind of runs through Ned um, and runs through Catelyn. And in doing this, they're allowing the audience to get to know the different characters so that in the later seasons and everything splits up and our attention has to be divided between like five or six different characters, we're able to do that because in this first season, we've gotten to know them through their interactions with Ned. So season one really kicks off with the king, the queen, the king, Robert Baratheon, Queen Cersei, her brother, Jaime, and her younger brother, Tyrion, heading up to winterfell where the starks live with the king hoping that ned will become his right hand man the hand of the king during their stay the younger the young the second youngest stark bran happens to catch the queen and her twin brother committing incest incest ew jamie lannister tosses him out the window the things i do for love and he breaks his back that actually is key to the later seasons. Ned decides to accompany the king down to King's Landing to become the right-hand man. Catelyn stays to take care of Bran, and then eventually goes to King's Landing after a failed assassination attempt on Bran. Why do bad things keep happening? And in the other end of the world, in Essos, we see Daenerys Targaryen, who's being sold to Khal Drogo by her brother in an attempt to create an alliance. After the wedding, she's given three dragon eggs. The dragon is the sigil of the house, and in their history, their family had been able to ride dragons. They're thought to be extinct at this point in the series. Over time, Daenerys and Khal Drogo develop a bond where they start to love each other. She becomes pregnant. Her brother becomes jealous and starts to feel that this union is starting to overshadow what he wants to do, which is cross over the narrow sea into westeros and take back the iron throne unfortunately he pushes too many buttons and eventually threatens daenerys and Khal drogo kills him back to westeros we're at king's landing and ned is the hand of the king the one thing we start to see about him is that he's unable to play any of the political games uh, he's not a schemer he's very much an emotional person who speaks from the heart who's constantly telling people exactly what he's thinking and how he's feeling and that creates a situation where his allies or people who could have been his allies uh, are afraid to align with him and it also starts to investigate a mystery that John Aaron had been trying to investigate prior to his death. Something to do with the children of Robert Baratheon and Cersei Lannister. As he goes through his investigation, he realizes that, that all the Baratheon children have blonde hair. And traditionally, Baratheon children had dark hair. Only the sons and daughters of Lannisters, Lannister males, had blonde hair. And that, a lot, that leads... Ned to realize that Cersei had been having an affair with her own brother, Jaime. Cersei does not take this lightly, manages to get the king killed indirectly, and then has her son put on the throne, who then arrests Ned. In what is the first big surprise in this series, what was the first shocking moment was the death of Ned Stark. They kill the protagonist of the first season. Never in my life up until that point had I seen a main character killed off in the first season. Don't get me wrong, The Sopranos is my favorite show of all time, and that had some serious twists, but they were always kind of expected. The death of Ned Stark is the beginning of the separation of all our characters. All his children at this point are no longer together. Sansa is engaged to the king's son, Joffrey, who's now the king. So she's sort of trapped in the castle. His second daughter, Arya, has disappeared, headed north. Heading back over to Essos, we see that Khal Drogo 
has been injured defending her honor against another one of the Dothraki. His wound starts to fester and he starts to get sick and he's near death. She decides to ask a witch, a witch, to revive him, to cast a spell to revive him. The witch, <laughs> the witch double crosses her, which causes her to miscarry, allows Drogo to live, but he's no longer Drogo. Like he's, he's essentially brain dead at that point. The Kalazar leaves her, except for a handful of loyal people. And she decides instead of living with a vegetable, she kills him. At that point, she realizes that she should be queen of Westeros and decides to try and hatch these eggs that were given to her after her wedding. She walks into his funeral pyre with the three eggs. When the flames have all died down, she emerges with three dragons. All the, the three eggs had hatched and... She's ready. She's ready to be the mother of dragons. And that's sort of the end of her story for the first season. One more important character, which is Jon Snow. I know I haven't really mentioned very much of the, the Stark children. They're more into season two. Like I said, I find that the first season is really about Ned. And of course Daenerys, but mostly about Ned. Uh, I do want to add Jon Snow in this because he does become really important in the later seasons. So Jon Snow is the bastard son of Ned Stark. That's why he doesn't use the name Stark. And he, in the first season, in the first episode, decides that he's going to join the Night's Watch. As he decides to head off, asks his dad if one day he'll ever find out about his mother, which the dad says, the next time I see you, uh, I'll tell you everything you want to know. Which, by the way, whenever you hear that in Game of Thrones, like the next time I'll see you, you know they're going to die. <laughs> they're gonna die Tyrion Lannister accompanies him and Tyrion gets to see firsthand just exactly you know how dire the situation is up north they're undermanned the men that they do have mostly are thieves instead of going to jail or or being beheaded choose to go live out their life north of the wall or at the wall so Tyrion leaves heading south and Jon pretty much stays up at the wall and that's that's really season one those are the main storylines they all become obviously each character at this point separates and goes their own way and they're each their 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 storylines grow in the second season specifically that of Arya's Tyrion becomes I think Tyrion replaces Ned in the second season as that main go-to character as I said earlier one of the things that I really enjoyed is the fact that Ned is our vessel in this world He's what ties everyone together outside of Daenerys. He fights to sort of protect her life because the king wants to send assassins to kill her. And Ned disagrees with this idea of killing a young girl who poses no threat yet. So I do like the idea of, of Ned being this vessel out in this world. I find that season one is probably tied for my favorite season along with season three it doesn't have quite the show-stopping effects that the rest of the seasons do it doesn't have the battles like the blackwater in season two or the battle of the bastards in season six it's a little quiet a little more toned down it deals with with politics though and i really like the political intrigue i like the the family dynamic of the Starks and the Lannisters. I really sort of enjoyed seeing the progression of these characters, not just them heading towards action scenes, you know, because now we're accustomed that always, the second last episode is always going to be like a big battle. And it wasn't the case in season one. What we were seeing was the growth of characters. We were seeing them change or not change or regress over the, the first season. And the really the culmination of the first season is... Is, is not so much Ned Stark being decapitated, which obviously is the highlight of it, but it's it's really starting to see all the Starks separated and all having to fend for themselves. Sansa, poor thing, um, is probably at this point in the show a big brat, and most people disliked her character. Going back, it's it's quite interesting to take a look at a character like Sansa and see just how she evolves, and Jamie as well. He changes as a character over the next few seasons and, and it starts in the third season uh so it's it is interesting to go back and see that first season just see the characters that i love now i didn't necessarily really love then like i, I hated them uh, i mentioned 
John talking to Ned. By now, we are most people who've seen the show know who his mother is. But there's definitely a, a real sadness going back and watching that scene, knowing that they'll never speak again. It's it's a tender moment, and it's the last moment. I think watching the first season and seeing the Starks together, especially the first couple episodes, there's some sort of manufactured nostalgia there. And it adds some sort of level of tragedy. It adds that extra level of tragedy. Overall, I give this season a 10 out of 10. I mean, I love that season. I've seen that season probably five or six times. It's right up there with season three. They're all great seasons. I mean, they're all top-notch storytelling. But like I said, I really like the intimate nature of the first season. And having said that, thank you very much. Take care. And I'll see you when we discuss season two.